selling your product and brand. How many of you who are, let's say, solopreneurs or freelancers, how many of you consider yourselves salespeople? Salespeople? Salespeople. Sure. You do? I love that. So often I find freelancers don't think of themselves as salespeople. They think of themselves as people who have a product or a service, but not a salesperson. So I'm glad to hear you do. Um, we are all salespeople. No matter what we do, we are selling something. We're selling our brand. We're selling our product. We're selling our um, trustworthiness. We're selling our ability to be um, believed. But we're all selling something. So selling your product and selling your brand are really the same sort of thing. No one likes to be sold or given a hard sell when they buy something. We all have that picture of the sort of sleazy used car salesman, right? Who's there to sell you something. I've got something for you, right? Um, but we don't really like that. Nobody likes that. So the idea, if we're not going to sell people, is that we're going to listen to them. So we're going to listen, then we're going to offer options and suggestions. We talked a little while ago about suggestive selling, and this would be a similar idea. But in terms of selling, it really comes down to listening. Because we don't like to be sold. We don't like any of those sort of things. Um, how many of you have heard of active listening? Anybody? I have. Yeah, OK, good. Um, so it's a technique. It's a technique of listening, then reframing, and then asking questions to determine what the customer is actually seeking. So it doesn't even have to be a customer. You could use active listening with anybody. Um, Anybody know what is the purpose of active listening? If I'm going to... Make sure you understand. Okay, very good. So if I make sure I understand you, what am I offering to you? So that I know that you understand. Right, to create comfort and assurance. Right. Right, where it's a building block of trust. So if I feel that you've heard me, I can relax. Right? You've heard me. To be heard is a wonderful thing. And to be heard is a rare thing in the sales equation. So when we can think of active listening and really making sure that someone feels heard, we're going to be able to actually get them what they need, and they're going to be able to buy what they need from us, whether it's a product or a service. So when you listen, you're going to discover what they need from you and your business and your brand. And then let's talk for a second about active listening. So listening would be listening to somebody state what they're saying, and then reframing. What would the reframing be? What does that mean? Putting it in context. All right. So saying it a little bit differently. So I'm not really sure what I need, but I need something kind of cute because I'm going to uh, give my mom this really great gift. And so um, I need it like in uh, two days. And so you know, people don't always know what they want, right? So if we say, OK, so I hear you want something for your mom, but you don't have a lot of time, and you want it to be cute and memorable. And then you can start asking questions. So what, what's your price point? What are you thinking of spending? Uh, maybe 60 bucks. OK, for 60 bucks, you're looking for something special and memorable for your mom. Let's see what we can do for that. right? So by reframing it, you're able to maybe help them establish clarity, which is really, really helpful. Because sometimes people come to you, and they don't know what they want. So you said you do photography for events. Right. Right? Right. Yeah, so people, when they come to you, do they say, well, I'm going to need about 75 uh, proofs. I'm going to need the lighting to come from this direction and that direction. Never. No, right? <laughs> That's not their job, right? But they want a feeling. They're like, I want you to capture this, and I want to focus on this person, and I want to focus on this moment, and I want to make sure that so-and-so looks good and that you don't catch me in the frame a lot because it's not about me, right? They're going to say little things like that. So active listening is really helpful in those moments. So you Absolutely. can say, OK, here's what I can do. Now, in those moments, um, if, you've, if you've used the active listening, what are, the, what are some of the things that you would like to call back to those people? What's important for them to hear from you? Well, very often, they'll, they'll basically just say they want to feature a certain person. But so then I'll say, well, what is it that you want to capture about that person? You want to capture what they're doing, how they're feeling, uh, you know, what their personality is. And those are all different shots completely. Right. right. So that's how you find out exactly what they're looking for. Right. I love that. Uh, you used a couple good words, what and how, right? Yes. Um, so those are the things that you're going to deliver. You're going to deliver the what and the how. Because sometimes they might, they might know the what, 
but they are going to say it from a totally different perspective than the what that you know. Typically, they know what they didn't want after the fact right. <laughs> much quicker than they know what they did want before it. Right. <laughs> Although I think a lot of people sort of know what they don't want sometimes easier yeah. than what they want. Yes. I don't want this. I don't want that. So then you have to look at the relief. You have to look what's left over. Right. Hmm. Good. I like that example. Um, so active listening is really what sales is all about. So if we can listen, if we can solve the problem in that moment, it's going to really help the client feel like they're getting satisfaction. And satisfaction is really what we're looking for, because that's, that's really important in that customer service interaction. Um, and that listening is something that doesn't really happen a lot. So often sales is back to um, my quote from before, service is a conversation. It's not a soliloquy or a lecture right, or a monologue. And very often selling becomes a monologue or a soliloquy or a lecture. And selling doesn't feel good when it's like that. It's very one-sided. When you think about sales as being a solution, as opposed to being just something to sell, it becomes much, uh, much more unique for that, for that client. And it truly is not one size fits all. It's customer specific. So back to um, when I was a waitress, like sure, I could sell somebody the things that I liked, but they might not like what I liked. Right? I got to find out what do they like. So, for instance, you know, in restaurants, people would always say, "Well, what do you like?" or "What's the best thing?" I can tell you what the best thing is, but it might not be the best thing for you. So, my job was to ask questions. Well, what are you in the mood for tonight? Oh, I'm starving. Oh, do you like red meat? Oh, no. Okay, do you like fish? Oh my God, I love fish. I haven't had fish in forever. Okay, great. So we have X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. So if I had just said the short ribs, they'd be like, oh, "I don't like this girl." She likes different things. Yeah, but that's what it comes down to, right? right. So we have to make sure that we're uh, on, on, on point with all that, because otherwise it's going to be too, uh, it, it won't make any sense in that moment. So yeah, exactly right. Don't sell your product, solve their problems. Um, so this is from Mark Cuban, a shark himself. Um, and it's interesting when you know this is from him, because if you've seen him, he seems pretty sharky, right? He doesn't seem like he's um, not about selling, but it's interesting to hear that he's talking about solving problems. And I do believe that that's what customer service is truly about, that it is about solving problems. It's not just about selling products. And when you find brands and when you find um, companies that will do that for you, that really is what makes the difference. The, the difference is that they're looking at you as an individual, and they're helping you feel better and solve a problem that you might have. So back to that, that person looking for a gift for their mom, right? My problem is finding something wonderful. But here you are. This is not a problem for me, right? My problem is I need to capture this event. This is not a problem for me. When I worked in restaurants, that was the thing. I'd say we have so many things to make people happy. And that was the thing I tried to empower my teams with, is to think outside the box. Um, in hospitality, we always say, don't say no, right? Don't say no. Say, well, I'd love to do that. Let me see what I can do, right? And what, you know, maybe it's not the exact thing that they wanted. Well, I wanted to have uh, venison tonight. We don't have venison. Well, I don't have that. Well, let me see what I can do, right? Well, what I can do is offer you duck breast. And it's cooked in a red wine sauce, and it's amazing. Don't have venison, but maybe the duck will be to your liking, right? So there's things that we can do. When I was a maitre d', um, people would always have complaints about their tables. I can say no, or I can say, well, sure. Let's see what we can offer you. Let's see if I can get you another table or another chair, or get a wobble wedge under there because it's wobbly. Um, find out really what the problem is. Is it the table, or is it that they're under a cold air vent, and they're cold? OK, well, I can adjust the vent. Um, when I worked at that fine dining restaurant, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't actually adjust the temperature. So we had like beautiful pashminas for women to put on, because women almost always had on less clothing than the men. So I'd bring them a pashmina. So sometimes it wasn't about the table. It's about what's happening at the table. So ask questions, find out, and then you can actually solve the problem. Because sometimes the problem is much easier solved than what the customer actually thinks. There's a great quote from Henry Ford the inventor of Ford Motors. And he said, if I had asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse, right? Because those were the days before cars. People would have said, I want a faster horse. And he created an automobile, which they didn't even have at that point. 
So sometimes people think they need, in my case, a different table. They don't need a different table. They need to be warmer, right? So when we find that out, then we can do cool things. So in terms of like you were talking about your business before, what are some of the things that you can do um, for your customers when they, you know, for instance, they're like, oh, I need this and I need that. What are some of the things that you have in your back pocket that you know that you can offer? Or do you have anything like that? I like to use props a lot, and a lot of times people don't think about it. Okay. And uh, when people can't relax, very often a prop makes a difference. And I use humor a lot also to get people to relax. All that right. seems to be the biggest problem. Everybody thinks they take a bad picture, ah. and so they're always concerned. So putting them at ease, distracting them from the fact that they are sitting for a photo, right. and giving them something to do. Right. Yeah, I like that you use the word distraction and also the notion that people come in with that they're no good at things. Right. Right? I'm no good at this, so, right? Um, and I think that's really important, too, in terms of being a business owner, being a leader, um, and working with teams. Very often, your, your teams are going to say, I'm no good at talking to people. Oh, I'm not good at, at selling. Oh, I'm not good at, you know, doing those sort of things. Yes, you are. I hired you because... You're good at that. You just haven't figured it out yet. So we're going to make sure that you can get there. So I think it's important to sort of, we're not going to prove people wrong, but we're going to show them that they are capable of more than they thought. And that's the beauty, right? In customer service, we have to train people on the steps of customer service, which is why this whole course, designing a great customer service experience, is so important. Because really, it's about deciding and choosing to make that true, but then training it. Training it and showing people they can make an impact on people. And that's the cool thing about customer service. You can make an impact on people. You can make a memory for them. And it's a memory that's going to last and permeate the ideas of your business. That's the cool thing. So when you can show someone that they can do that in their everyday work life, that's a beautiful thing. So showing somebody, you know, a customer that they're no good at taking photos, well, you look pretty gorgeous in this one, right? I guess right. you do. Right? Or I'm no good at talking people. Well, you just talk to that person and they feel fantastic. Look at that review that they just wrote for you. Right? So it's a wonderful thing to show people what they're capable of while you're creating this experience for them. That's what becomes a memory. That's what becomes a memory. And that's what we're here to do. If you're interested in pursuing any more of this, you can always check this out in my book, Hello and Every Little Thing That Matters. Um, I talk about all of these topics, including um, the language, the uh, steps of service, the blueprint of service, um, these are all things that are tried and true. And I welcome you to check it out. I also welcome you to check me out on my website, kateedwardsconsulting.com, uh, at Instagram at kateedwardsnyc, and at Twitter at servicedefined.